Hey folks, it's Brett Pruitt again with Living Full Time in My RV. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about in this video financing and some of the challenges that you might uh, find, as well as uh, in getting insurance for your uh, RV. Since you're going to be living full time in it, you're going to need to look at uh, uh, some different items in insurance that will be real important to you. Um, I've got a notepad, so when I look down, please bear with me. I'm not a, a, a perfect uh, YouTube host, but I uh, do as well as I can. First of all, you've got different types of financing. My recommendation to you is, is before, you know, once you've determined what type of RV that you need, get it down to a couple of classes. That's going to help you start getting a price idea of what you need to go out and look for. Then you need to determine how much of a borrower is going to allow you to borrow or how much a finance company is going to allow you to borrow. Um, you have different options. You've got your, uh, you can go to the dealer, let the dealer run you through a bunch of different credit agencies. Um, you can go to your local bank or your credit union. I, I went to my credit union, and one of the things the RV dealer told me that was really interesting was he could not believe that I got a financing company to give me a loan to live full-time in my RV because they had had people with 800 credit scores. I mean, mine was a 760, but they had people with 800 credit scores being denied financing to live full-time in an RV because the banks were concerned that they were just going to go off to Montana somewhere, park, get off the grid, and they were never going to find them again. Uh, my credit union, when I sat down, I talked to them. I said, look, I'm going to get out of my $760 a month condo. I want to borrow about up to $25,000 because I knew that I could get what I wanted, twenty, you know, somewhere between $16,000 and $25,000. I said, and, um, you know, I, I want that loan for maximum of five years. And uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, pay you guys back, and I'm going to live in this thing full time. And they said no problem, and that shocked him because he had seen too many people get uh, rejected because they didn't, ha they weren't going to have a main address anymore. So that's something you might want to keep in mind when you go to talk to the bank. Now I'm not telling you to lie to the bank. What I'm telling you is, is keep that in mind that that could be a stumbling block for you. So your credit union where they get to make the decision right there, a smaller credit union is probably your best bet for looking for them. And I wound up with a 3.49% financing on mine, um, which was <laughs> pretty, pretty darn good because they the, the dealer couldn't even uh, match it. Now let's say you've got some credit bumps on the road. There are some other options out there. You can look online through Craigslist and um, and uh, you know through your uh, yellowpages.com and things of that sort. And you can find companies that actually We'll go out and get RVs, and they will rent to own the RV to you for usually your first, third, second, and third, and your last payment down, and you know, 280, 300, 400 a month, somewhere around there. Um, there's one caveat you need to be concerned about is oftentimes these things are not in great condition. It is definitely buyer beware. Uh, you may want to watch a few videos which I'll probably will copy a few videos with permission of a couple of guys that will show you how to walk through and check on your mobile home so that you can see if you've got good solid walls like I've got um, or if you've got uh, uh, you know what rot uh, different types of roofs and I'm gonna go over that in some videos as well there's gonna be a lot of videos on here talking about things that, that many people don't talk about when it comes to full-time RVing but um, those are available to you if you've got some credit glitches. Um, you know, there's the benefits to living in an a RV full time. I, you know, my family thought I was crazy when I first went, and then they came and visited this RV of mine. And I mean, I, I don't have any videos up right now of it. I'll put it up. I mean, I've I've got a dining room table with four chairs, a kitchen with more counter space than I had in my condo. That's solid surface Corian countertops. Uh, two uh, double uh, sinks, very deep sinks. Um, you know, gas stove, uh, fridge, refrigerator, freezer. I've got two uh, recliners in the living room plus the sofa that you see behind me. Uh, floor to ceiling uh, storage place in the kitchen that you know pantries and everything else. That my ceilings in here are over eight and a half feet high. Um, you know, I've got more storage under the front, the back, everything that you can think of. Four slides. I mean, I've got almost 400 square feet in this unit, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot until you see how things are compartmentalized. You know, I mean, I've got uh, a standing shower that I can fit me in a, in a girl in. Uh, I've got a bathroom with a porcelain toilet. You know, I've got a, a king size bed, uh, two TVs, a fireplace. Uh, uh, 
you know, you name it, we've, we've, we've got it. Awnings, uh, it's just countless to, to look at. But uh, the in order for you to do like I did, and again, I bought mine for sixteen nine at Carpenter's Campers in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, and talked to Justin Moran down there. They're good people. We just type in Carpenter's Campers uh, and it'll come up. And, um, you know, they once you know what you can borrow, that opens the doors for you to figure out what's going to fit best for you. Um, where to buy your RV? We're going to hit that one in this video as well. You can buy from individual, or we call private sales, and sometimes you can find some really good deals and some really good quality campers. But keep in mind, they are not going to the, the, the private dealer. You're you're not going to have somebody that's uh, like like if you go to an actual dealer instead of a private seller, you're not going to have somebody that can go through, do the inspections on it, find where the problems are at, tell you where the problems are at, tell you what they fixed and how much it's going to cost to fix the rest. Um, that's the only downside to that is really buyer beware when you're buying from these rent to own lots or these private sellers, you know, whether you find them on Craigslist or in the newspaper. The, I highly recommend going to a dealer. I also highly men, recommend buying used instead of new. And the reason that I do that is, is if I was to buy this Keystone Montana 2500 or some, excuse me, $3,500 RL was, and I bought it brand new in 2005, it would have cost me over $84,000. Eight years later, hardly used, this thing literally was a lawn ornament for the people that purchased it. I'm into, into it for $16,900 plus $1,800 in uh, re minor repairs. Everything from a little bit of water damage to having the roof, which is a rubber roof, scraped and resealed. You can, When you buy a brand new RV, you take 100% of the depreciation. It's one of the things for you to think about. The first three years, that eighty thousand dollar RV will drop to around thirty thousand if you're lucky. Thirty thousand. All right. Sometimes it'll drop less than that. So you buy them three years, five years, eight years old. Somebody else took the depreciation hit, and especially if you buy them, which I'll get into again in the future, with aluminum superstructures that are welded aluminum, not bolted aluminum, welded all the way around, not just tack welded superstructures. You, you've got no real worries going forward because you've got something that, that is solid to build on. And if you get water damage with your wood, you can rip it up and put new wood in. But your frame's not going to go to hell in a handbasket on you. Um, the dealer will go through that RV when they get it and take it in on a trade. They'll make some repairs. They'll stick it out there as an as-is. And they'll tell you, especially carpenters, campers, will tell you what's wrong with your RV. What it is that they've already fixed. They're going to tell you what they'll sell it to you for, and they'll tell you what it's going to cost to get it repaired. And a lot of times, if you buy it from them, they'll give you a deal on the repair. I mean, my repairs would have been over $3,000. I got them for $1,800. That was a $1,200 savings to me. Um, there's also RV shows. Sometimes you can find deals at RV shows. Um, typically, you're buying something that's going to be under warranty. It's going to be brand new nine times out of ten. But also, a lot of times, you're buying at a premium. And you're paying more money than what the item actually is worth. So that's that's some ideas to keep in mind. Now, finally, let's talk about insurance. Okay. If you're going to live into an RV full time, the number one thing that you have to have, read my lips, you must have this, is you've got to be able to have in your policy, should your RV be destroyed, somewhere to live while you're getting a new RV. You've got to have them give you hotel money and things of that sort since you have some place to live. You need to also keep in mind how much your contents cost, especially those items that can't be replaced and get you a good content policy. I recommend no less than $5,000 contents. Um, furthermore, the best companies are going to give you a value for your RV the day you buy. It's going to be wholesale value. And if you're smart and you do your homework, you'll be able to buy your RV for less than wholesale value like I did. Even with the repairs I had in mind, I still had $1,500 less than wholesale value, and the camper company made money. So what that did for me was mine was worth $21,000. It's insured at $21,000. As long as I keep insurance through the nationwide that I bought through a company, I'm going to give you the address and the telephone number of in a minute. As long as I keep insurance to those guys, if 20 years from now this thing catches fire, I'm going to get a check for 21000 plus the 5000 contents minus my deductible, which with your nationwide you have a vanishing deductible. Every year you're with them, your deductible gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Those are things that you absolutely positively must have. 
And they also will come with liability in case somebody trips down up your stairs or whatever and, and gets hurt. Now, the people that I recommend <coughs> is Brown & Brown of Kentucky Incorporated. They're an insur a multi-line insurance agency. They'll find you a good deal. Depending upon your credit rating, you may not get nationwide. Uh, they are in Columbia, Kentucky. Their zip code is 42728-0009. I will put this in the video. And you can reach them at 800 257-8623 and um, uh, or again if you have uh, oh, excuse me head scan it's 800-257-8623 uh, they were fantastic I was able to call them up the same day that I was planning on going down to the credit union and getting the check to take to the camper company I called them at 9 o'clock at 940 I had uh, my insurance writers emailed to me so that I could give them to the bank and at 1 o'clock in the afternoon I had the keys in the camper um, they, they jumped on this thing fast. They got the insurance underwritten, the whole nine yards. I mean, they're fantastic folks. And uh, again, I'm with, I'm with a top tier carrier nationwide, vanishing deductible. So give them a call. Um, that's the uh, end of this video. Fe feel free to make comments. Please do make comments, share, copy this thing, post it wherever you want. I don't care. Um, shoot me an email and I check my email about once every two weeks and I'll answer your questions put in questions in the videos I'll answer those as well again thanks for watching um, I'm gonna put some more videos up and we'll we'll uh, see you in a little while